Hey there, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at different types of materials that are commonly used in climbing systems. And there's a lot of different types of materials on the market, but we're going to be looking at three that tend to be used over and over again. And those are the very common, popular and cheap nylon, the also very common but not quite as cheap Dyneema, uh, also goes by a few other names like Dynex. And we also have uh, on the market these days aramid fibers, sometimes also called Technora or Kevlar, which have their own properties. So we're going to talk about what part of the climbing systems each of these might be used in and what their strengths and weaknesses could be. So the first part of the climbing system I want to talk about is the rope itself. And ropes are made out of nylon. And the reason they're made out of nylon is really just one reason, they stretch. Um, and the rope I'm talking about specifically is the lead climbing rope. So the dynamic property of the material you're using is really important in reducing the impact force of the climbing system. And the impact force is the energy that's delivered to the lead climber when they fall. So ropes are going to be made out of nylon. And the, one of the properties of nylon is it's not particularly resistant to UV light compared to some of the other materials we we'll talk about. So when you're storing your rope, it's best to store it in a darker place. So, you know, a cellar or something like that is totally fine as long as it's not damp. And if you are using nylon ropes as fixed ropes that stay up in the mountains, then it's important to take them down uh, seasonally at the very least. And if you're going to use a fixed rope, it's good to check to see how much wear it's had. So when guiding in the Himalayas, for example, uh, I'm always inspecting the ropes before I'm weighting them. There's a lot of things that could damage them, including wind, but UV is one of, certainly one of them. Um, another thing about nylon is it has a moderate to good amount of abrasion resistance, certainly better than some of the other materials we'll talk about. It has really low resistance to chemicals. So if you're storing this in the back of your car, say in a bin where you had an old battery, you could actually severely damage the nylon of the rope. So something to keep in mind. Um, as we move on, we have slings that are made out of nylon as well. Uh, the difference in properties of the nylon here versus the, the sheath on this climbing rope is the nylon in the sling is a little bit more slick compared to the sheath on the climbing rope just due to the weave pattern. And so if you're using it for a friction hitch or something like that, um, you may need to apply a few more wraps if you're using a nylon tubular webbing sling uh, depending on the coefficient of friction with the base rope they're using as compared to you know a uh, loop a tied loop made out of um, accessory cord so this is five millimeter sterling brand accessory cord and has smaller diameter significantly than a climbing rope it might be attached to and so it's going to bind pretty well just due to pressure but uh, these, all these three materials are made out of nylon, so all of them are going to stretch. Nylon, uh, it's also not as strong as the other materials we're talking about for its weight or for its size. So I believe this Prusik loop can probably hold uh, around four to five kilonewtons as a single strand, um, as opposed to a single strand of another type of material that we'll talk about in a little bit, which is gonna be significantly stronger. So um, it's a good thing to keep in mind. Okay, moving on over here, most slings that we're using for extending our lead protection are gonna be made out of Dyneema these days. And the reason Dyneema is often preferred is it has higher abrasion resistance when compared to nylon slings. So if this is rubbing across rock, things like that, it's actually gonna last significantly longer than nylon. It's also more UV resistant, which is a small consideration given the amount of time that this is going to be exposed to UV. But the biggest reason these are commonly used for extending lead protection is because they're much, much lighter weight and more compact when they're sitting on your harness, for example. So um, that's a real big advantage. A disadvantage of Dyneema is that it's slippery. So in certain applications, like if you're using it for a friction hitch, it can slide a little bit more easily. So uh, than nylon, so you might just have to uh, make sure that your Prusik or um, Climb Heist is dressed really well to prevent it from slipping. And it has a lower melting temperature than nylon. So nylon has a melting temperature, depending on the make, right around 450 degrees Fahrenheit. 
whereas Dyneema has a melting temperature closer to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So in spe very specific applications, for example, if you are repelling really quickly on a static rope that's fat in hot weather, you might be able to get the temperature of bol your belay device up, you know, in the upper 200 degrees, 250 degrees Fahrenheit, if you were really trying really hard. And so having a piece of Dyneema as an extension attached to your belay device um, might decrease the strength of this material. Um, it could start to decompose at really high temperatures. So something to keep in mind, because that could obviously directly affect your safety since that would be a primary way that you are attached to the rope system. Okay? Um, in friction hitches and things like that, uh, it, depending on the application, a lot of times loads are pretty low, like just body weight, for example, in crevasse rescue systems. But if you start getting into systems where you have multiple rescuers um, on some rigging and your load starts to get higher and higher and higher, then certainly a friction hitch sliding could start to generate a fair amount of heat as well. And the amount of heat that's generated is also going to depend on the type of material that this is bound up on. So a really coarse sheathed static rope with this material and this sliding under a huge load is going to generate a lot more heat than maybe uh, uh, an alpine rope with a dry treated sheath and just a human load. So commonly they are used for friction hitches and there's a really low chance that you're melting it, especially in cool or cold environments. But as a consideration, once you start into get, getting into more um, complex rescue systems or if you're on a rescue team, then this would probably not be a good choice and, and would be against your training to use in rescue systems. Moving down, we have aramid fiber. So this is a hollow block and aramid also just sometimes generically called Kevlar, although Kevlar is a type of aramid. Uh, it's very different from Dyneema in that it has, a, it can withstand very high temperatures, so above 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is commonly used in the clothing of firefighters. Um, so pretty, pretty resistant. It also is relatively resistant to um, chemicals, much more so than nylon. This is hyperstatic, as is Dyneema, which is another consideration in your climbing system. Static meaning it does not stretch. So if I go like this and pull, the force that I'm generating with my right hand is being applied to my left hand with almost a complete trans transference. Almost none is being taken up through stretch of the material. And that's a very important consideration when you're working with these materials because if I'm, say, using this as an extension and clipping myself into an anchor, if I shock load this, there's a chance in very specific circumstances that I might break this material or more likely I'm having a high degree of transference of energy into my body and I could injure myself. And one example of when that could happen is if I'm setting up a top rope climb but it's meant to be a lead climb. And so in order to set it up, I approach the edge of a cliff and I have to reach over. Maybe I have to reach way down. And so I decide to clip myself into that anchor using my sling as a personal anchor system or as a tether. And then there's a chance that I fall off and then shock load that piece of Dyneema and break it. So it's a very good idea if you're going to use these as extension which can be done, but that you keep in mind those two scenarios. Heating, if you're talking about Dyneema, uh, that could happen in really long rappels on fat ropes in hot weather, right? Done really quickly, so avoid that and uh, avoid clipping yourself in in such a way that you could fall and shock load this and snap the material. Um, and that could be really helpful for increasing your safety out there. With um, Kevlar slash aramid fiber, another consideration is this material when it's bent and tied into a knot over and over and over again, or when it's rubbed over a bent surface, over time it breaks down the material. And all material will break down the more they're looped and knotted and bent, um, but aramid fiber more than most fibers will reduce, it will reduce its strength. So 
Uh, nylon will reduce very little in strength being bent over and over again, probably due to the stretch and the property of the material, but due to the hyperstatic property of and the way it's woven with um, Kevlar material and aramid fiber, um, you will reduce its overall strength. Now that's generally not a, a great concern in climbing systems because this is rated to 3,147 pounds of force. For example, at the minimum breaking strength with this hollow block. And so if you reduce that down to say 2,000 pounds of force, if you're just using this as a backup to your rappel, that's not going to be an issue at all. Okay, so keep in mind a lot of these materials and what they're rated to, 22 kilonewtons for slings or 12 kilonewtons of impact force um, for most single rated climbing ropes, that's more than sufficient for recreational climbing systems. And in fact, if you say this, this uh, rope delivered, actually delivered 12 kilonewtons of force into your body, you're probably gonna have severe internal injuries and you might even die. Yeah, we'll move on and last we have you know materials that are combinations so the outside of this is nylon and the inside core is an aramid fiber it's technora so you get kind of the best of a lot of different properties because another property of technora or aramid fiber is it's highly cut resistant so it's fire retardant and it's cut resistant and so using a cordelette um, that's extremely strong for its width. So this is 5.9 millimeter um, cord, and I believe it's rated to a little over 5,000 pounds, as opposed to five millimeter nylon cord, which is gonna be rated to closer to, to uh, 1,200 pounds. Um, it's significantly stronger. And then if I'm using this in um, climbing systems, say in an alpine environment, and I'm wrapping it around a horn, that might have some sharp edges on it. The nylon is highly abrasion resistant combined with a very cut resistant aramid fiber core means this is gonna be maybe as strong as my climbing rope in that system uh, and, or as resistant as my climbing rope is to being cut. So that's really important if I'm taking something in the alpine and wrapping around sharp horns and things like that. Uh, the secondary consideration with that is if I wanna bring cord and leave it behind say to set up a rappel, then this might be difficult because it could be hard to cut depending on what type of knife I have brought with me. It right, might require a lot more sawing action to get through. So that's a good place to start out with our climbing system and take a look at our next video and we're going to get into some properties of friction hitches or of the cord and material that you want to use for friction hitches and how that's going to play a role in how well those friction hitches bind or slip in specific contexts.